there you go. Seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm going to call the government organization and legislation committee of the town council to order at, uh, I don't see the uh, time, but 932, I think. Mm -hmm. And to make sure uh, everyone can hear and be heard, I'm going to call roll. Lynn Griesmer. Present. Mandy Johanneke. Present. Jennifer Taub. Present. Uh, and I'm present. Michelle Miller is absent. I'm, no, she's here. Oh, she's here. Yes, I'm oh, here. here. Oh. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, there she is in the baseball cap. All right. Good. <laughs> All right. So pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 22 and 107 of the Acts of 2022, and extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may also do so via Zoom or by telephone. Uh, see, uh, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Thank you all for being here. And I want to dive right into the town manager goals. Um, so I have some of Kathy's edits. And Mandy, you had some edits that I figured you could speak for yourself for, and Alicia had a couple of concerns. So, um, we're, uh, Mandy, do you want to start since you're right here, and then we can move I didn't in. think I had edits. Oh, I thought <laughs> I had you down for something. Staffing study, study financial. No, that was Anna. Okay, but I got, I have that for her too. So, okay, so that was a, okay, so then. <laughs> <laughs> like I do. <laughs> okay, Alicia just has a couple, so let's look at those. And uh, let me see. The first one. Um, uh, was... Pat, do you do you have a a doc that you're working from already, or do you want me to bring up the draft? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, would you bring up the town manager goals, the last uh, iteration? Thank you. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um... Um, is it okay to work from the clean version so people can see the changes made after the last version presented? I think so. I think that's a good idea. Thank I think that's you. easier than a markup on a markup. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Okay. Um, in terms, uh, Alicia had a concern about public safety, community health and safety. You had two concerns in that area. Uh, the first one had to do with, uh, yeah. let's go to number five, which was she was concerned we had eliminated the senior center. Um, we didn't, what, it, pardon me? We didn't eliminate it. We just put it elsewhere. I think it's under capital investments number seven. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. So that was moved simply. So that, okay. And so, the other thing, oh, go I, ahead. can I comment on that one? Oh, please do. We, we moved it, but in looking at what we moved, we talk about improvements to the senior center. Right. And I right. think what Alicia was going for was the original one was programming. And as we talked right. about last time, what how does that relate is there some way we can uh, should we put in something up in number two about community health and safety where youth programming is something about you know I, I don't even know how to word it but something that instead of just I think for youth programming was develop youth programming for youth empower programming for youth empowerment and we had developed programming for seniors but mm -hmm. that wasn't really the issue but is there something we should put in here about programming for seniors that there addresses are. the actual issue the seniors are having now the issues um, are that there aren't staff so they can do the programming 
So like there's a whole gym, you know, all this exercise equipment. They can't use it because there's no staff. Right. And so that's not number five, though. That's no. not the building right. thing. Right. So so is there... It, again, it goes to what have we voted on and what haven't we, right? Um, in terms of programming mm -hmm. or staffing or all, but is that something the council should have a conversation on? And if so, does it belong here or as a separate conversation? I think it belongs here as a number six. And I was going to make that suggestion to address senior center staffing. So equipment and uh, so facilities can be, or equipment can be fully utilized or something like that. I think that's a good idea. Is that how do other people feel? Jennifer? Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, we did agree as a council that we wanted to expand and strengthen programming. So this is getting a little specific, but I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, and again, it's not programming. They have programming. They, you know, they you know, maybe. Like I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lynn. No, uh, go ahead. maybe it's something where we shouldn't be so specific what the programming is. Since we didn't discuss that as a council. Yeah. If if we're yeah. sticking to that rule. Yeah, but quite literally, it is not about developing or programming. It is staffing. The senior if, center. If it's staffing, is it more of a financial guideline then? Yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, can I while we're at it, there's a there's two colons together on this. Right before four. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Semicolons. Um, semicolons, thank you. Um <laughs> so, Pat, what were you suggesting? Well, I, I think I said something about uh, address staffing so to implement senior center programming or something. I, I'm fine with that. That does belong in a, in a um, financial memo. Right. I mean, that's the question. Would, it, would that go here in manager or, policy goals or would it more properly go in the financial guidelines if it's staffing? Boy, um, yeah, we we just need to remember that for Monday because I don't think we I know we didn't put that in the financial okay. goals yesterday. Okay, Hang Michelle. On. Has, Michelle. Yeah. Michelle, yeah, I just I wanted to agree that I think anything that um, talks about what um, Paul's job is like with staff and stuff should probably be in more in the financial guideline than um, yeah. in this. Yeah. And uh, Anna, since we're there, Anna wanted to have a staffing study done. And I'm not sure I want to spend the money to do that, but that we should probably then also add to the financial guidelines and the council can decide. Does that make sense, folks? I would put it as something that is as a little bubble and say that, you know, this needs to be voted on. Yeah. Okay. Jennifer? Yeah, I was good. I was going to agree um, because we said we weren't going to introduce something for the first time no. in the town manager right. goals that the right. council hadn't agreed on. Right. And that includes, you know, the staffing issue. Okay. And then um, Alicia's concern in public safety was the, uh, we have, where is it? Um, It says, uh, undertake a review of public safety protocols consistent with the council's November 14th, 2022 vote. It's number four. She wants it to be written out. I don't see the need for that, but I'd love opinions from other people about whether we want to add what that vote was. Uh, Athena, can you pull up the November 14th yeah. votes? Yeah. Yeah.
I'm getting nauseous. Why? Close your oh, eyes for a second. I'm just making sure that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was because it's like being said... on a roller coaster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to see. Yeah. So there were several. Yeah. Hold on to your lunch. I'm going back up. <laughs> <laughs> so this was the bigger one. Okay, hang on. So this is a review of public safety protocols. Yeah, organize a review of public safety protocols for responding to and handling uh, public safety calls involving all residents, including minors, in order to recommend changes to those protocols if appropriate. So that's part of the seven that we adopted on the 14th. Right. Were there any right. others that we adopted? The other one underneath it about CRESS, protocols for CRESS. No, I meant, is there, are there any other motions? I don't know. There was this. Uh, Jennifer? Yeah, I thought, uh, uh, well, as I recall, Alicia specifically oh, referenced, um, you know, a establishing an anti-racist culture. I think that's, and I do recall that we passed a motion, you know, specifically with, on that. So I think mm -hmm. that's what we're looking for. So see, I, I, that's separate, I think. Sorry. Yeah, to... here it is. It says recommend the town manager to work with the APD to review and update, if appropriate, selected policies of the APD. This rule review shall be including, but not limited to, use of force, consent searches, low level and pretextual stops. And that was Alicia's motion. So uh, there are a lot of things in here which is I think why we selected saying consistent with the vote because public safety protocols uh, and policies are addressed in several places. So it's so seemed... they... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jennifer, no. Go were ahead. they more than one vote? I mean, do we have to reference votes? Like we voted on each motion? No, we, we didn't vote, vote on, on each motion. motion. Yeah, It was one vote. It was one vote for the motion above. And then afterwards, she offered a couple other motions. The, right. to my recollection is, um, here, my, there it is, I think. There's yeah. the anti-racist one. Right. And it was voted on. Right. So the one about APD um, up above, maybe we could put in parentheses in the thing. Uh, no, we can't. No. So so Alicia asked for two things. Um, what she asked for that one that's already in there that references the November twenty second votes to be spelled 14. out. Fourteen votes to be spelled out. But if we spell it out, it's actually narrower than in some sense what, or, or it gets more complicated because as Pat said, there's multiple votes there. And then she asked for the anti-racist one to be put in. And Kathy pointed out that there's an anti-racist goal um, somewhere in the management goals. I don't know what number three of the management goals, um, right. which this one, which builds sort of on this particular motion, but is broader than this particular motion. And so I think we're conflating those two requests right now. Yeah. Well, it, under personnel management, it says foster a proactive anti-racist culture throughout all town departments. That's uh, management goals too. So I think uh, this, this- Jennifer has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have the whole row. Let me get it back. Go ahead, Jen. Yeah, so as I recall the November 14th, meeting the reason we had this specific we voted on this motion to recommend the town manager assist the apd is because we were discussing whether it it was i mean the discussion was to to specifically 
have this develop this culture in the police department, not just in every department. I, I, as I recall that, and I think that may, so that that's the context in which this motion was passed. I'm not, I'm just relaying what happened. I'm not saying, so I, I, I'm not, I can't put words in anyone's mouth, but I'm wondering if maybe that's why the request was made to be specific because we had this discussion at the November 14th meeting and then we voted this motion. Okay, hang on, Michelle. And then I'm sorry, I thought you were finished, Jen. I'm done. I am. Michelle. Yeah, I, I, I think that's right. I think that Alicia fought hard to prioritize the APD in terms of um getting the training. However, I think we did this town manager goal review after that occurred uh, and and I think changed the language to sort of encompass at the recommendation, I believe, of Mandy Joe. And there was, I remember, discussion on that. Um, and those goals were approved with that language in there. So do we, is that language, I'm talking last year's goals. Is that, So what is the current language as it stands right now? in relation to um, anti-racist culture. And I do think uh, Mandy is correct that we're conflating the two uh, requests yeah. from Alicia. Yeah. But I, do do we, ha didn't we agree to, to broaden that language on the anti-racist culture? Because I think having spoken to Pamela Young and the folks who were doing that work, it, it wasn't sort of a linear uh, journey that, that they were going on. It was more, um, and so I think the idea was, yes, we want to prioritize a APD, but that's happening already in some sense. And now it's not a linear, you know. Right. Yeah, process. I think. Yeah. And go ahead. Uh, no, that thinking? was it. That was it. I just wanted to but, see what if we could look at what the current. Um, anti yeah, the, go ahead. Just to see uh, yeah, if that's available to look at. That would be great. Lynn. Now, I, I also want to point out that this vote was a year ago, and we've done an evaluation right after it, where obviously he had not accomplished that. But then we did another evaluation. And so as much as I, I'm i pleased that we continue to have the anti-racist in all departments down with personnel, um, I'm not clear that this... And and might I I might add that the other uh, fourteen uh, December November fourteen votes are still in process under the list of seven. Yeah. So uh, I I'm trying to resolve the fact that this is a year later. There's been a, a fair amount of anti-racist training. It continues in all departments. Uh, and how do we want to reflect? <laughs> And it's also regularly documented and in town manager reports and things. So I think that whatever we decide, that line, that it be documented and regular updates be provided to the council. I think that can be eliminated. Mandy and then Jen. Yeah, um, to, to answer Michelle's question, I don't have the exact language, but I'm, I'm working on pulling it up. Um, the current goals for 2023 for the manager have sort of develop an anti-racist culture. And then I think it has a clause that says something like beginning with the APD. And we we right. talked a lot last December about whether we should have that clause in there. It's now been a year. We've kept the main clause and the, the GOL proposed to delete that sort of beginning with clause. It's been a year. And so the question I think becomes at what point have you begun and do you just continue with everything, right? Um, last year, we indicated through the goals which department to begin with, although, I, you know, the, the language there was, um, you know, a little bit... The, the hmm. Let me see if I can pull up the language for that one. Um, the language that we're operating under right now that we settled on last December um, was, uh, it's in number two, I think, um, foster a proactive anti-racist culture throughout all town departments and work with the APD to identify steps that are documented and inform models for town departments. 
that was last year's. And the proposal for this year is, I think, just the first clause of that. Foster a pro -anti proactive anti-racist culture throughout all town departments. Uh, so, then... so in the end, none of it really matched this November 2022 language. Well, we adopted last year for a goal. Number two of the goal uh, in under racial equity is support the work of the town in repairing damage of. Oh no, number three. No, I'm this sorry. was in two personnel number five. Okay, hang on, let me see. Uh, hmm. Wait, I'm number five. N number two mm -hmm. personnel under management goals, the yeah. big two. And yeah, then yeah I five. see it. Foster a proactive racist culture throughout all town departments. And so why isn't that enough? Point Have of it's... order. Um, what? A, it's just a quick point of order. Sorry to be so formal, but um, it would really help me, Athena, if we could look at the goals right now because I um I don't see them in the packet and um and I, I can't see this draft yeah. that we're yeah that would be great thank you so Kathy uh was concerned and I'm kind of that there are five repeats of of uh this goal um without throughout the document but I don't know if that concerns me in the same way, Jennifer. Yeah, I'm concerned that we're um, actually, you know, Alicia had a request and recommendation, and I feel like we're kind of going against the spirit of that to say, well, we started it in a, I mean, we haven't accomplished it. So it sounds like we're weakening it. You know, she wanted to keep in specifically, I, if I'm understanding her correctly, the APD and now we're taking it out because we're saying that should have already begun. I'm that's I'm feeling like the APD, Cress, all of the you know the fire department, all of the their departments and they're covered in the statement about in all departments, and I think there was. Validity. I understand why there was an emphasis on policing, and there still is. And you know, we're talking about a resident oversight board. We're talking about several other positive things that really need to happen. And I'm feeling like if we're providing an anti-racist culture, we're working to foster, <laughs> to create throughout all town departments. I don't see why we have to pull out the APD. So whether um, um, I, I'm not. I'm just, what I'm trying to get back to is the discussion on that November 14th, because we really discussed this and that's why we then had the motion to vote. Right. And so and I'm just, I, so what do you, what did I? Hang on. Yeah. Yeah. So are we, are, is I'm, the suggestion that we not even reference November 14th? No, I think that we can right. reference it. It's a complex, as we saw, as we went through it. And it addresses many specifics. So, I guess I have another question. What is exactly Alicia's, was her question? Uh, let me see. I don't know if I wrote it down how she said it. She was, uh, she didn't like the, she wanted the specificity of the November 14th vote. Beyond referring to it, which we right. do? Right, and here we have two references to it. Uh Propose the town council plan for the creation of a resident oversight, blah, blah, blah. Undertake a review of public safety protocols consistent with the vote. So I don't see why we need to add more language. I'm going to jump to Michelle, Jen, and I'll come back to you if you have something. Yeah, no, to no, please do. I, I think if we were to review the tape from this time last year in GOL, we actually had the same discussion that we're having now. Um, and we came, and so Jennifer, I totally understand what you're saying, and you're right. That's exactly what Alicia was hoping to have happen. Um, but we we had a discussion in GOL last year after the November 14th vote, and and this is where the language that we have now 
um, comes from. I'm wondering if Athena, if you could, could you scroll to where we talk about the um, anti-racism training? Because I think again, there were like, there are two requests, right? From Alicia, it sounds like. Well, I was wondering if in here, the resident oversight board, um, what if we just use the language vote to, does that? So it, it's kind of already there, right? If you propose to the town council right. plan, Plan for the, the creation of the resident oversight board. November 22 vote. So that one isn't the issue, I don't think, because it yeah. says. But thank you, Athena. Yeah. Um, public safety protocols. And this um, one, the protocols were like in two different votes. So I wonder if we just say the 22nd votes, November 2022 votes, plural, because we just saw there were multiple votes that talked about it. Okay, I'm going to jump back to Michelle and then Lynn. And then Michelle, you wanted to go down to this section. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to see what it looks like. Um, the anti-racism training is that under per person personnel. Where did that come up? Under personnel. Well, there's this. Provide training regarding racial equity rights and other options to town council employees and members of the public. And then there was also something in personnel. Another mention of this uh let me see yeah number five foster a proactive anti-racist culture throughout all town departments yeah and i remember mandy and it's it, I, I remember it resonating with me the the use of the word foster um mandy that was your suggested language to, to and we talked about why that made sense in this case so i'm just trying to reconcile that with what Jennifer is saying, where have you know about uh, you know whether we've begun the training and um, and do what do we know about that training? Pat, you said that it's been reported in the town manager reports. Um, yeah, so I, mean, I guess I been... feel a little unsure because I don't know what has occurred. Yeah, over the course of the year, the departments have had trainings, and and I believe many of them were staff. Um, facilitated people who had, you know, and also DEI facilitated. There have been uh, outreach to residents. The one outreach that hasn't happened is to the council. Um, and I'm hoping to bring that back with the next council because, because. <laughs> Lynn, can I go to Lynn, Michelle? Is that all right? Yes. So could you please go back up to the goal that we were discussing? Which one? Yeah, we got but this one, right? Racial equity and social. This one. The, okay, no, okay. the one where we refer to the November 14th vote. Sorry. What about the possibility yeah. of propose? Um, I would like to look again at those votes and say, propose to the town council a plan or plans for completion or for addressing the votes of November 14 or something like that. And that means there's more than one vote and we can put in parentheses e.g. resident oversight board, public safety protocols, and maybe some language that would be more um, consistent with um, what she's looking for. But that vote had seven parts to it. I don't believe any of them are completed. And then there was the additional vote, two votes that Alicia made the proposals for. Jen, and then Mandy. I was just gonna say, I agree with Lynn. And I think it's it will then be committing to some follow through because we have these votes. There were a lot of votes that night. So what we're keeping the thread going of have they been implemented and at what point? So I think it's good not to just vote and then hope it happened. Mandy. 
I'm going to disagree. <laughs> um, there were a lot of parts to that, but many times the council has told the manager to do stuff. We can point to not just this November 2022 vote. We can point to the um, the street lighting that just happened. I think we can point to some stuff with um, the safety zones. Um, yeah, I don't know whether that was a direct menu the the there's the um the the directing the manager to deal with the bylaws that are outstanding right um none of those are in this document because it, it, i would assume because we have said we've already told him and they don't rise to the level of policy goals Right. When we talk about what this document is compared to things we do the course of the rest of the year. And I always felt that pulling out, you know, there was that vote. That vote still stands. We have not, you know, rescinded that vote. All seven or eight, plus the other ones that are below that. There were multiple votes that night. All stand. But by pulling out a couple, we're saying those are the ones that rise to goal level. Whereas if we do what Lynn just suggested, we've just basically said after a year, they all rise to a goal level. But these other things we've done with the manager three years ago don't rise to a goal level. Um, and that I think needs, to, if we're going to do that, we need to have a conversation as to when we do separate motions to direct the manager, which ones go in the goals and which ones don't versus just part of everyday management. Right. And it does feel like the two two very important issues are addressed, the resident oversight board and the protocols. Um, and so I just don't see a need. Uh, we added, changed the second vote to votes, which I think is very important because as we looked at it, we realized how complex. I, you know, I think we can try to make ourselves feel better and list everything or we can trust that the count, you know, that we've pulled out the most important ones and that we're going to, and we're demanding that over the course of this year, these be worked on. Michelle? Um, without, I, I was trying to go back to the meeting and trying to find a transcript to, to hear what Alicia said. I'm feeling just my concern is it's hard when I can't remember what she said. And, yeah. and I didn't write it down word for word. Yeah. So if I would, it, could we move on? I would still want to, I'm still going to look for that and, and maybe we can move on to the other things. And then if there's a need, come back to it and, and figure out if we've missed something that she said that we haven't covered. Good. Or, That'd okay? be great. All right. Um, uh, Pat, if I, may, if I may, yes. I wonder if, I wonder if there's a distinction between like the tasks that the council asks the town manager to carry out like what was in the November 14 vote and the other ones that Mandy right. referred to and if that should be referred to rather than in each of the policy goals um, in the relationship with the town council like um, you know just a, a broader reference to carry out the continue to carry out the, the tasks assigned by the, the town council or di directives yeah. from the town council and report <clears throat> or something like that in here. I think that's a good idea. I really do. Well, how do other people react to that? Thumbs up from Mandy, Jennifer, Lynn, Michelle, I can see you researching. I'm, I'm, no, I'm <laughs> sorry. I guess I didn't understand what it was, but I, if every, it sounds like. Yeah, it, it, that was going to say the same thing. <clears throat> You could okay, would you repeat it, Athena, and see show us where it, Athena? We I'm sorry if you could just say that one more time. No, yeah. that's okay. So, um, what I was hearing was that there's a distinction between these like overarching policy goals and the spe the very specific directives the town council votes for the town manager to you know the the November 14 votes the um, the. I don't remember if the council actually voted, but they the council requested the town manager come back with an updated um, transportation commission proposal and the streetlights and so on. So I wonder if that goes into the relationship with the town council, like you know, carry out the directives assigned by the council um, 
and with, you know, timely reports back on progress or something like that in this part, rather than, like Mandy said, we're trying to pick out what's, which of those, because there could be more throughout the year, just like we saw mm -hmm. this year. So making a reference in here as a broader goal to do the things the council says to do, <laughs> um, rather than all the specific things the council's yeah, asked I'm, them to do. Does that help Jennifer and Michelle? Could we go back, I, I guess, to um, community health and safety just to see what it now says? Well, mm -hmm. It was just a suggestion. You can take a yeah. look at that. No, I think it's an important suggestion, and I wanted to stay there. So go yeah. ahead. But No, I want to see. Can I just ask a question? So when we, like the November 14th, where we had like five or seven motions, does that actually, that gets written down for the town manager? I mean... <laughs> must be a pretty long list, but does he actually, we make the motions and then, yeah, what, I mean, this I, raises I a good question of what happens. Well, if you're worried about what happens, then we have to list every specific task we have ever assigned the town manager no, in no. every one of these areas. No, no, I'm just saying, is it listed somewhere, right. not in this document? Well, okay. the, the town manager keeps track of everything that yeah. the, the council directs, and then we sort of have it on a, a running list of okay. things that he that he needs to report back mm -hmm. on. So the, you know, for example, streetlights and transportation commission is now something that I ask him about every time we set agendas. <laughs> so Michelle, like are you specifically re referencing Jennifer's comment, or can we go back to what we were doing? Uh, well, sort of both, if I could just, um, say it. yeah, I remember thinking last year, similarly, like, well, maybe we should have an appendix to this document that lists every single, you know, and, and, and then thinking, okay, the November 14th was a response to something that occurred in the community, which was a little bit unique in the sense, um, of things. And I think the part that we, at least for me, I will say, I have trust that, uh, you know, and, and I, I know sometimes that's a triggering thing to say, but I have trust that the DEI department has taken uh, sort of not only that motion, but the, the fullness of what all of that means and has really taken it on to, um, to do all of this. So I don't think I don't think it helps us necessarily to try to put in every specific thing in that vote. And I think what Athena is saying just adds like an, a good reminder just to sort of embody all of those things, um, as she said, that they, they do on this um, sort of running tabulation internally that they're using. That's my Thank thought. You. Thank you, Michelle. I agree with that. Can we roll down down now back to whatever we were doing for relationship with the town council? Uh, uh, and so Athena, you talked about carrying out the directives. Um and you said it well, and I'm. Well, I don't know that my language was as elegant as you want to put in here. So, <laughs> and I, yeah. So, uh, results. Uh, assistance to providing yeah. policy leadership, developing and revising and establishing and implementing um, appropriate support for committees, respond to communications, resolve issues, provide communications to the council to ensure the council receives relevant information. And, uh, advocate for the so possibly after uh, before after five six maybe should be that carry out the hey, I lost you guys no oh, there you are we're here yeah no <laughs> um to carry out the directives of council um say it again Athena I think you said it well. I think it was carry out council directives and report back on their progress and on a regular basis. Yeah. Because while he does report on many things, you know, um, so, so, yeah. 
How does that feel to folks? Michelle, you're muted, you're muted. Michelle. What's that? You're, you're muted. muted. Oh, I, I, I read with my lips. I was just. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were talking to us. <laughs> Anybody have a problem with this? I guess I wonder, do, um, Athena, you probably would know the answer to this best. Um, do you think Paul would understand what is being, what is meant by council directives? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. I think that's, I, th I think the distinction here is, you know, the council has overall policy goals, but then the council also votes specific things that the council wants the town manager to do like the November 14 thing and all these other things that come up that the council asks to do through the year. So there could be more in 2024 that aren't included in these goals. And I think that kind of helps distinguish. That's um, great. With these goals. And then we want you to also do the specific things that we ask you to do through the year. Yeah. In a timely manner. <laughs> no, don't add that. <laughs> um, are we okay with this? Are we okay about leaving the November 14th vote and then the November 14 votes uh, in the uh, community health and safety? I, I think. Well, say what you think, honey. <laughs> I was going to raise my hand. No, I, I think we should. Because I, I think it may send the message if we take it out that we're we've changed I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think we should take out the November 14th. No, no, I'm saying we should leave it in because I think to take out a reference to it may send a message that it's no longer priority. Yeah, and I was not suggesting we remove it. I was I know. suggesting- I know, that's what I'm saying. I agree with you for that reason. Yeah, okay. So we're in agreement there, Jen. Okay. Yes. All right, I, since we're in relationship with the town council, uh, I've got a couple of things from Kathy. Um, the first one is to maintain, develop, uh, develop, and it says, in, and increase positive relations, relationships and communication with town council. I think she wants it to say, to maintain and develop positive relationships. She's looking to take and increase out. So it would be and maintain and develop if that's okay with people. Um, and then in number four, uh, but, 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 no, number five, I'm sorry. It says provide regular communications. She would like to take out the word regular and replace it with timely. Any objection to that? Okay. And, I, I have an objection to that. <laughs> I'm sorry, um, what? I have an object, not an objection, but I have a thought on that. Um, yeah, go for it. I, I think timely is, I mean, what what does timely mean? I, I, I mean, I, I liked regular because regular gives some sense of consistency where, you know, that it would happen on some basis, but timely, um, you know, my idea might be different than yours, Pat, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, exactly. I, so I agree with that, leaving it as is, provide regular communications. Yeah, and I'm just trying to think of maybe what she was, like, what was the heart of her recommendation? What was she trying? Yeah, and I don't like end timely. Is time sensitive? Like, I'm just. But time we're sensitive, we get emails about. Got, right away. I think what? this part in advance of council meetings or media coverage, that was something that was. I'm sorry, Mandy, you have your hand up, and I wonder if you're going to. Well, finish. we're going to finish. Wait, 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 hang on. Hang on, Mandy. Let Athena finish, and then it'll be your turn. Um, so there was some <laughs> concern in the past about some things getting into the newspaper before the council heard about them or the council finding out things in the newspaper that councilors felt they sh should have been informed about in 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 advance of uh, media coverage. So that's what this part is yeah. about. Yeah. Mandy, thanks for uh, I was gonna say the same thing, which means timely and that last clause are a, to me the same thing. We don't need both. Yeah. 
And I like the last clause better because it sort of defines what timely is. Someone could say timely is right after the media coverage. And we said, no, we want it before <laughs> the media coverage. <laughs> yeah. How's that feel to everyone? Okay. Now, Kathy also uh, in this section was saying uh, the last uh, is economic vitality and financial health, not relationship with the council. Uh, and, but to me, it's advocate for and assist the council in advocating for. Um, so I'm not uncomfortable with it where it is, but what do people think? The very last. Kathy thinks number seven should be where? Uh, she thinks number seven should be in economic vitality and financial health, not relationship with council. Maybe, so she says, maybe finance, maybe economic vitality. Mm. Mandy and then Jennifer, that's how it appears on my screen. I don't know who went first. I think there's two options, maybe. I mean, there's three. There's there's leave it here. Um, if we want to move the state legislative action part up, the special act part does not belong in finance. And as I said on Monday, this is a two-part sort of advocacy. It's the special acts that we've had filed, and it's also statewide legislation that will benefit us, um, mm -hmm. that, that we want to see enacted. And so the special act should absolutely remain here in my mind. We could potentially split them into the special act stay here and the legislative action go somewhere else. Um, most of what we cited, the such as parts, does go to finance, but not everything goes to finance, right? The state level building authority is finance, but it's also major capital projects, right? And right. so it, we either we we put it here to try and consolidate it from four different areas into one area, but then when we did the such as clause, it all makes it look like finance such that it should be up there. I wonder if we just delete the such as clause and just do and council prioritized state legislative action. Um, that eliminates a lot of things we were keeping in the goals which is why we had this sort of description, but adding the description makes it seem like it's in the wrong area, simply hmm. because right now that's where our prioritization is, but it's not always gonna be there. Yeah. It yeah. might be climate stuff at some point or housing stuff at some point, which isn't financial. Jennifer? Uh, I also think the point was made uh, when Kathy raised it at the council meeting this week that it was under relationship with council because we're asking that for assistance to assist the council in advocating for, you know, uh, special legislation or whatever it may be. That That's also why it was here. Yeah. And, and I, Mandy's correct that because of what we listed it as examples that triggered that it should be in finance, but it was for the town manager to help the council and advocating for what we need. So I'm hearing, advocating for. I'm hearing, but I want to check, Jennifer, that you're okay with this deletion. Yes. But okay. I again I just wanted to clarify that's why I think yes. we put it here. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody uncomfortable with this? Okay, let's move on then. Uh, I think we're down to Kathy's comments. Um, so if we would go up to climate action, I'll just go through them. Okay, yeah. And number three, uh, support the development of climate action focused bylaws. And then her comment is uh, that include um, including the waste hauler bylaw that action folks in and then she's saying it's too specific on waste hall or spe uh, specifies design we have not yet seen or so what she's saying is to remove um anything after the um, waste hauler bylaw period there or or semicolon actually and then remove that includes universal curb size pickup and pay as you throw fee structure those are things i definitely would like but i think they can come out lynn but based on our desire to reduce specificity, I would agree with that request. 
Anybody have an objection? Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. That was Alicia. Oh, her Kathy also had a question. Uh, but I think we are these one year goals. No, they're not in terms of community health and safety. No, they're not one term goals. One year goals. One, but one Scrivener thing. Yep. Before needs a parentheses. Oh yeah. Thank you. I didn't even notice that. Um. Okay. So then Kathy is moving us to housing affordability. And she has some in number one, where it says ensure the operation of a permanent seasonal shelter. We're at the very beginning of the process. Um, so she was concerned that we shouldn't have the word ensure there. And let me see if I have that word she did um, Oh, I guess she ensure the operation of a season. Yeah, she wanted to get rid of the word permanent because what we're doing is operating a seasonal shelter so that we guarantee that we're making sure that there is one in town as we also continue to develop the one that we're going which would be permanent. So it's removing the word permanent. And I agree with that as important as this is to me. Anybody? Uh, Lynn? I, I agree with that, but then I also think we need to include something in this goal about trying to work on the um, other effort, which is, I think, the biggest concern that people are starting to have regarding the VFW site is whether or not we will ever find the money. But I still think now that we've purchased the property, we should have something in here, whether it's two and then everything else cascades down but it should be to continue to explore the development of the vfw site for a seasonal or year-round shelter could it those two things be combined but i'm going to go to mandy first before i share my idea thank you lynn uh, if we want to put it in i think it should be under five capital investments that's where we're putting all the building projects and a shelter, yep. that's a building yep. project. So I don't object to necessarily doing it, but I would put it under five, somewhere I in agree. five. Yeah, I it's agree. Okay me too. Anybody else not okay with that? Yeah, because there's, it definitely is going to be a major capital investment because of the site. Um. Are we all right with that? Yeah, okay, let me see what else she has here. Um, she's saying combine four and five to expand rentals and stabilizing housing. Um, propose measures to address and increase the availability of attainable rental housing to residents and propose measures to stabilize housing for long-term residents in town. <laughs> oh boy, that would be nice, but I don't even know if it's possible given that we're a capitalist society, but combining those things is possible. Um, can can you let me know what you want to put in major capital investments regarding- Oh, I'm there? sorry. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, who said, Mandy, did you say it? Or yeah, I, it I think we can just add the number seven, right? Yeah. Ex or options for and facilitate a discussion. I don't know whether it kind of works there, but um, you know, we could add a permanent shelter, seasonal or year-round shelter, and or you know, I, I mean, it could. It I'm just trying to simplify things here yeah, instead yeah. of adding yeah. another number. It doesn't quite read well, but we're not adding an eight then. Yeah, which would be good. Okay. Jennifer and then Michelle. I'm sorry. Do you, I'm really sorry. Can you re repeat what Kathy was suggesting for hoarding, uh, housing affordability? 
Okay, Michelle, are you, before I do that, Jen, are you going ahead to that or are you on the seasonal shelter, Michelle? I'm on the seasonal shelter. Okay, then I'm, we're I'm sorry, I thought we had moved on. That's all right. No, no, no. <laughs> Um, and, and my uh, my connection's unstable, so I, it might be that I'm. I sorry if I got us off track, but um, yeah, I I'm so explore options for and facilitate a council discussion on a permanent seasonal and year round shelter. Have has that not already occurred to some extent? Yeah, I think it has. So I feel like, uh, what do we really want Paul to do when it comes yeah. to? That? seasonal and real year-round shelter and if we know what we really want then we can <laughs> figure out i don't think this is where we want it for, for personally i'm i'm wondering and i'm going to jump in mandy ensure back in housing affordability ensure the operation of a seasonal year-round shelter while de while working to develop a permanent year-round shelter something like that but i'm going to jump to mandy before I think maybe we do need to create an eight in major capital investments that says continue progress on the development of a permanent the development season. of a permanent seasonal or year round shelter, something like that. Does that feel good to people? I think I it's that. Yeah. yeah, good. Great. Jennifer, that's okay with you. Good. Thank you, Mandy. Yeah. Mandy, that was a in one didn't work. Continue progress on the development of a permanent seasonal or year-round shelter. Yeah. Okay, thanks. All right, and then we have, she would like to somehow or, how or other conflate combine four and five, which address uh, housing availability for residents and rental housing to residents and how and to stabilize housing for long-term residents. I don't even know what we mean by that, but anyway, Jennifer. Um I I like it the way it is. <laughs> you know, I maybe mean? if we wanted to change the wording of stabilized housing. I mean, you know, again, I think that's a lens through which we should look at a lot of policies. You know, are they supporting or perhaps working against sustaining well, our long term? Yeah, community? I'm going to yeah, I'm going to say one thing. It's proposing measures to address and increase the availability of attainable resident housing, build more buildings. That's not what I'm not saying. That's what I want to have happen. Um, and. So anyway, I'm going to go to Michelle and then back, I think back to you, Jen. Is that all right? Yep. I just, I don't see these as conflatable. I think uh, that there's one that's talking about attainable rental housing. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's one that's talking about our, you know, stabilization for long-term residents. I just, I'm not, I guess I'm not understanding where Kathy, without having her here, saw yeah. those complete com being able to be completed um, I she feel, yeah she feel yeah she feels like it's being said twice uh to so she's suggesting a measure to expand rentals and stabilize housing so that's how so she's saying you can conflate it and combine it by saying that stabilize housing for an uh increase of availability of rental what if you just take out but rental and then remove five? No, I think we need to have the long term the long term residents because we're losing that part of our population. I think that's kind of the point. I would just push back a little on that in the sense, um, Jennifer, that we're under housing affordability. That's what we're talking about, right? So just if you could tell me, I, I agree with you that this is a goal that I want to have in here somewhere, but what is, I guess, how does that in, in terms of housing affordability, um, what do you mean when you say a stabilized housing for long-term residents? You mean, um, 
one of the things I mean what you I mean. think all of our building <laughs> has been <laughs> not to serve that you know we've built 862 units in the last like seven years and it really has not been they have not been with the intent to sustain our long term Oh, I see. Okay. So like a lot of student housing versus housing where there'd be affordable options for people who were, let's just say, non-student. Right. Um, right. Okay. One of, one of the things that um, we propose stabilized housing for long-term residents, the uh, uh, housing trust is looking at the possibility you know, of uh, creating a fund that would be support seniors who are having trouble maintaining their homes. So in that sense, uh, but I, I'm really, uh, I feel like many of the rental house ha rental housing residents who are renters are long-term residents of Amherst. And that gets lost in the schmuggy googie. No, stuff. no, it doesn't, but that's not who we've been building for. That the building well, that has I don't agree happened. with that, but yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. I agree that that's that that's true and we should have more housing for, but that's not what the focus has. That's not what's been happening. So instead of you and I debating that, let's yeah. just decide. But I thought we already be... settled on this in the council. <laughs> and we have settled on nothing in the council. Come on. <laughs> but anyway, but was it, in the goals la it was in our goals last okay. year. I don't know. But that we can changed I finish? It. Let's just leave it as it is even though I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I'm good with that. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, major capital investments. She would, this is why emphasize the, uh, why the emphasis on the fire station first, DPW is in worse shape. Three implies spending money to design fire. Um, it, it There's something to this one for, for because, we have all along said the DPW has to move before we can address fire. So I think there's some validity here. Uh, um, what are, whatever your name is, Griesmer, and then Haneke. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I've been waiting till we get to this. Uh, first of all, I think we need to be very consistent with what we say about fire as well as with um, um, DPW. DPW. So, um, for, and the other thing is, whenever we say fire, we should fi say fire slash EMS station. Um, and so in two, um, no, I'm sorry, three, bring the council a request to set a location for the placement of the central fire slash EMS station. And if feasible, begin the schematic design phase. And then under two, under four, identify and secure a location or locations for the Department of Public Works, comma, and. If feasible, begin the schematic right. design process. Yes. And I don't care whether you reverse the order of those. It, I, you know, I don't have to get into what my personal bias. Yeah. Um, and then this present a financing plan, I guess we can leave that separately, but the reality is you aren't going to do a request for either one of these separately without a financing plan. Yeah. Uh, so. Mandy and then Jennifer, thank you, Lynn. So I could be remembering differently, um, but I think potentially part of the reason the schematic design was not included in the DPW is because the money's already authorized for schematic design for DPW, I believe. I it it may be, but that but this says begin the schematic design. Okay, right. But but I think that might have been why we had that difference there. I, I'm okay with adding it in, but I think the difference might have been there because we would need to authorize the money to begin the schematic de design phase for fire EMS, but the money's DPW can already begin immediately once we have a location. Right. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with my computer, so. <laughs> but I'm okay with leaving them in. 
Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I, I agree with what you've both said. And I think sometimes, I do think we have to be a little cognizant in this, you know, it is a public facing document that if we take something out because maybe it started to be done, it sends a message to the public. So I think it's good here. It lets everyone know that both are a priority and one's not more of a priority than another. So I just to say that I think, I guess I know after the last GOL, we got a couple of emails the next day from, I think a couple of residents were kind of panicked because the language had changed. So just to be cognizant that, you know, we're sending a message out beyond just the town manager, which I'm sure you all know. <laughs> Lynn? Yeah. Uh, so in five, where it says central fire, I would go central fire slash EMS. And uh, in the new eight, there needs to be a space between development and of. Oh, yeah. Okay. Are people okay with this? I think no. Lynn, Lynn wanted mm -hmm. to add EMS in number five. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm okay with it. We can't afford it, and it's a multi-year goal. <laughs> Were there other changes in there? I think that's it on Kathy's on May. Yeah, emphasis fire. Uh, actually, she said, um, and I don't support. The, uh, bring the council a request to set a location for the replacement of the central fire. And then she wanted to remove and, if feasible, begin the schematic design phase. But I don't think that we well, should remove that. I don't either. Yeah. So anybody support that? No. And that was her last um, comment in that section. And I believe we can go to uh, goals, management goals now for some of her comments. So no other changes here, right? Right. And not that I can see. Capital. But I did. The, we did the climate. Act. Yeah, we're okay. Uh, under personnel management, um, number five, she would like to remove it because she feels like it's repeated throughout the document. But since racism is repeated across our culture in every moment of our lives, I would like to leave it there. Um, foster a proactive anti-racist culture throughout all town departments. Lynn. Yeah, I'd like to leave it there because ultimately I would um, hope that as we get through some of the ones above, we always have this here. Yeah. The other thing is I want to remind everybody here and we'll start reminding the new council. We're a department. We need to begin to address the issue ourselves. We have not done that. We tried once and once is not enough. And that was with the original council. So it should be an ongoing training for every council change. All right, then she goes down to finance. And she, let me see, uh, number six, she, it's, she would like to effectively manage and disperse ARPA funds with a lens of equity and inclusion and report to the council on the impacts and uses of these funds she would like to remove with a lens of equity and inclusion. Um, and in some ways, I agree with that because what what is that it's specifically addressing what? Um, if we put uh, solar on the high school, is that with a lens of equity and inclusion? I think it, in its own way it is. Uh, if we um, disperse funds to businesses, BIPOC businesses, lesbian, gay businesses, um, male-owned businesses, is that going done with a lens of equity and inclusion? I, I don't, I don't that it's like timely. What does it mean? What does that phrase mean? Because I believe that if the Amherst, the Black Business Association of Amherst and, and the Amherst area were to speak, there's only one idea about what that is. And it is an idea that, uh, never mind, I'm not going to say more than that. Michelle, who I rely on to 
I guess I just, without Kathy here, this is a real struggle for me and I'm feeling it more and more and in particular with this one, because I, I don't understand what concern would lead one to want to remove, uh, that, uh, that oh. from here. And okay. did she describe that? I think I'm seeing, it's hard to read her thing, but this may be what she was offering instead. I'm not sure. Okay. Effectively manage and disperse ARPA funds to support, it is what she's saying, high priority public and diverse needs. Okay. Okay. I'll see you guys again. And I mean, I that's helpful. That's really helpful. Yeah, so she's, she's saying, what are the high priority public needs that affect everybody? And what are some of the diverse needs of the community? I mean, I guess the only concern I have with that is it's it's sort of um, subjective, like a high priority, like that is uh, something that we would probably all describe differently. <laughs> well, there's so, a lot here, including ones of equity, equity and inclusion. Right, right. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. So I, yeah, this, I, I feel like, particularly sensitive to this right now because it's something that you know with the second round of ARPA that we haven't even we haven't yet heard from Paul on and I'm just feeling like I don't know this one and that's not what matters for the for these because these are two-year goals but I'm just I'm, I'm thinking yeah. and also do we I mean this goal literally is just for uh the next it's only this last round right of right our that's right. Forever, right so right okay i'll stop now because others okay <laughs> mandy and then lynn yeah um i would ask what are diverse needs <laughs> right. that one to me is is more subjective than high priority public needs um that one at least i think i could name a couple um lens of equity and inclusion if i had to guess the request for a deletion might be because people see what people interpret that differently. And we have been receiving a lot of comments that relate to one interpretation of equity and inclusion, um, in some sense, to almost the exclusion of some other interpretations, particularly, I would say, as it relates to money spent to improve the senior center. Um, and so um, I I don't know whether it's best to just delete all of it and just say disperse ARPA funds comma and report to the council on the impacts of them uh, as a cleaner way instead of debating which one has the right interpretation. But yeah. it, I feel like either high priority public needs not and, and get rid of diverse um, or keep with a lens of equity inclusion, which is what we had last year, I believe. Um, I, I'd go with either of those. Um, or nothing. That's so you're or free. nothing. Yeah, I'd get rid of diverse in in yeah yeah. Uh, Lynn, Jennifer, and then Michelle. I actually, oops, I actually like uh, getting rid of diverse. I would just keep with a with a lens of equity and inclusion. And just for high priority public yeah, needs and, and just, with the lens of equity and inclusion. Yeah. And then yeah. say and report to the town council, blah, blah, blah. Jennifer? Yes, I agree. I mean, why would we want to take out? I mean, again, that sends a message to take that out. And I don't think that's the message we want to convey. So I agree with Lynn. Okay. Michelle? I support Lynn's suggestion and Mandy and Lynn's suggestion. Um, the, the only other angle to think about this in is like, the treasury was very clear about the use of ARPA funds and um, and equity include like helping disenfranchised mm -hmm. folks was a major uh, piece of that. So if we really didn't have a way to deal with this, we could say in accordance with the treasury's uh, best practices or guidelines or whatever. But that might get a little bit uh, whirly for this. So I'm. Yeah. Uh yeah, I can go with this also. Okay. Uh, okay. I think we did relationship with the town council. 
So I think we've gone through all of Kathy's uh, concerns. Um, so, and it is uh, 1047. Boy, my computer. I may lose, my computer is not charging and I don't know why. So if I may pop out at any point, I have no idea. Um, so if that happens, Jennifer, I'm going to rely on you to keep going and I'll try calling in. Yeah. Uh, Pat, just wrote these. make sure that all of, all of the cords are tight. I, I know that's what I, mm -hmm. I've done. I don't know what's going on. So I may have another cord somewhere, but anyway, um, are people okay with the draft as it is now? My question is, do we have to revote it or should we revote it? Even I if think we, don't we should have re vote to. it. That's what I was going to do. I'll make the motion. Okay. To, to recommend the town council adopt the town manager goals as amended at the December 13th, 2023 GOL meeting. Is there a second? Second. second. Who was that? Halb. <laughs> Me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so we'll take a vote. Michelle? Aye. Jennifer? Yes. Andy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm an aye, so it's unanimous. Okay, before... Okay, so I think we're done with this right now. Uh, we have the carryover memo to look at and minutes. Um, but I want to uh, check to see if I would like to have a period of public comment. Um, so I'm going to add, again, I can't see the clock. So Athena, if you could say when we called the public comment. And there is no one in attendance, so I'm ending public comment. Seems such a silly thing. Um, OK, so what I have on the agenda is the carryover men uh, memo and minutes. Let's do the minutes real quick. Minutes for June 21st, July 12th, and August 8th, 2nd. Um, I make a, a motion that we accept the minutes for those dates as presented. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, let's vote on that. Lynn? Aye. Mandy? Aye. Jen? Yes. Michelle? Aye. And I'm an I. And then we need to authorize a member, a member of the committee to approve the minutes for September 13th, October 11th, October 25th, 11-15, uh, November 29th, uh, December 8th, and today's minutes after once they are pr uh, promoted. And I'm willing to do that. Um, you know, we uh, we moved to authorize Pat DeAngelis to approve the minutes of and then just fill them in. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Vote. Michelle? Aye. We were going to make you do it, but it didn't seem fair. And Mandy? <laughs> Aye. Lynn? Who was, who was Aye. The, I'm sorry. Who was the second? Uh, Mandy was. Thank you. Okay. Lynn? Aye. And Jennifer? Aye. And I'm an I. Okay, so we're done with that. So what we have right now is the carryover memo. Um, and I must admit, uh, I got, I have, can you pull that up, uh, Athena? Um, give, give me one second. I'm trying to get yes, yeah, this Yes, take all the time you need. And thank you everybody for the work on the goals. I just got to notice MMA is having a whole webinar on flag raising policies. Oh God. <laughs> I, I don't know if you all are aware, but we had, um, we had a request um, for the town to raise a, a pro-life flag and we were able to direct the requester to the flag policy and we haven't heard from them since so wow, wonderful to but applaud I you for getting i done. really really wish that we had known that uh you know uh, thank you for telling us that and that's exactly what has to happen uh so it seems like it's been effective i thought we'd so though if you take that workshop bring a copy of ours <laughs> okay 
Um, okay, sorry, I'm just now. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, thank you for you. Okay. And I think we can scroll down there. I think there are some sections that we were going to look at. And um, yeah, now, Athena, are is this? Uh, are you going to automatically add the charge? Is that what on the carryover menu or menu <laughs> memo, or are you asking us whether we want to? Uh, I can do that for you if you'd like. Okay, then we can scroll down. Does anybody have anything specific that they want to bring up on this? Okay, so let's just go through. Athena has quite a few comments on this, so let's roll through. Maybe, Michelle, did you have one specific on this? I do, yeah. I, oh, I, oh I, I'm I, sorry. I, I don't have, have the full gallery. I'm sorry. I didn't see your hand. Go ahead, Michelle. Thank you, Lynn. Um, yeah, just at the end of this, I missed a meeting um, when you guys discussed this, I think. So um, at the end of uh, the background here, I think in the status of the Amherst Black Reparations Committee charge, it says uh, there was a question in the committee about whether about the charge essentially approving all aspects of the report. I didn't understand what that was referring to or what that meant. I thought it meant that here's a charge and everything in it you're going to get as opposed to an investigation of the issues. And I think that's what was meant. I don't know who uh, raised that question. I don't remember. I I raised it. Let me see if I can find my notes. Awesome. Yeah, I wasn't sure if the, like all aspects of the report, if that was referring to the AHRA final report or if that was referring to what, what Pat just said of the charge. I thought that's what Pat said. Um, I was referencing the charge, but Mandy, why don't you speak for yourself and then I'll come back in with my memory uh, if it, if you don't speak to it. Um, yeah, so I don't have the charge in front of me, but I have my notes on the charge in front of me now. <laughs> um, and and what I I was referencing with that was, um, it, there was a, the first bullet point of the charge, you know, indicated something about um, support implementation of the recommendations in the assembly's final report. And mm -hmm. I, my question was, if that's actually in the charge, does that sort of mean the council is affirmatively adopting all of the recommendations in the charge? And so that's one of the questions I brought up that this transition memo was referencing. Right. Yeah. No, I totally understand what you're saying there. And it almost seems like something needs like, um, because I think right now the status is confusing from my perspective um, when it's stated that way. But I also understand what you're saying, um, which is, you know, it will be it will the whole process will need to be in collaboration with the council. And as the council sees the recommendations fitting in. Um, so I wonder how we get to that um, more effectively because that what's there now isn't in my mind clear and it's even a little bit confusing. So I'm just wondering if we might consider some other language that could get more to the heart of what you're saying, Mandy. I, um, if I can offer the, um, I, I think what was intended in the status was just sort of a summary of the discussion of, mm -hmm. of the GOL discussion, not exactly like this. I think the word status is a little confusing. It, it's just like what GOL had talked about regarding it up until now. So are you saying that we don't have to answer this question or, or 
Um, because it is part of the discussion, it can just stand. Well, see, in other sections, we have status slash discussion. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe just adding that word would make it more clear that this is this is just the, the things that GOL has talked about, a, a very brief summary of the things that GOL has talked about regarding the charge. So if I you think that, that would be great. Yeah, if we added that. And also, um, Mandy, would you want to specify uh, that you're referring to that first bullet? Or do you feel like, would that give it more clarity in terms of what you're saying? It was, I think my concern was not just the first bullet, but also the purpose statement and all it, it, okay. I had other concerns about the charge, but, but this was one I particularly wanted in the transition memo. Um, Cause I think that's sort of the first discussion we need to have about the committee and the charge is, is what is it doing? Um, right. How do we take this report and then and, yeah. and decide what gets right, uh, sort of carried into the successor bodies charge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does that feel comfortable to the two of you? And so I would combine those two, you know, we have GOL discussed creating a separate committee or integrating. Um, oh no, and then it works. GOL raised a question about whether the charge And I don't know if we need the word essentially. I mean, what do you all think? Whether the well, charge I, I was gonna say whether the charge as drafted results in approving all aspects of the report, something like that. Yep. As drafted results in the council approving all aspects of the report. Thank you. If I could just, uh, Pat, just stay with this for one second. Yeah, go ahead. And then Lynn, unless Lynn has something to add right now, go ahead, Michelle. Um, so where we're at, I just want to make sure I understand where we're at in this process. Um, and where we're at in this process is the committee and the council need to have continued discussion about the creation of a successor body, the structure that will take and what the charge will be. I am less tied personally to the draft charge that's there and whether it results in the council approving all aspects of the report. Um, because I think um, you know, there's still much more discussion that needs to happen. So it almost feels, and I say this with all due respect, um, it feels almost defensive, like putting that as a status because we haven't really um, worked through the process of having all of the discussions. So I just wanted to like name that. I'm not gonna, you know, uh, oppose it strongly. I just wanted to name that. I think this is an, a, an unfolding process that we're all consciously involved in. And so that we don't need to necessarily hold that, that fear, but I understand why it's there. I feel like it needs to be there because there is frequently a belief that a report guarantees not you know everything that i want because i'm this i'm the committee me um i get and if you start saying no that's not going to work this way then we're attacked so in a sense it is defensive and yeah. i think or maybe protective because I think we need to look at that charge. I haven't looked at it in a while. I don't have, uh, I don't have a thing I could tell you that you know I really want to go back to it. I even want to go back to integrating it into one committee, and into another committee, which is also going to be a volatile situation or a conversation for some people. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of where I am. Mandy? Yeah. I yeah. Oh, go ahead, Michelle. Go ahead. No, and then... I was just going to say I I appreciate the 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 word protective over the language I used mm -hmm. of defensive. I think that's what I was trying to get at. Um, and I just I want to I guess I'm it's more about um, uh, like that we we are empowered as a council, and I trust that process that we will go through 
I understand we've had those circumstances in the past, but I guess what I'm saying is let's make our reality different in terms of like how we approach these things as opposed to sort of setting ourselves up for, uh, you know, that sort of protection. Um, but well, I, I hear you. I hear you. But yeah. you're speaking for yourself and some residents. I'm speaking for myself and some residents. Yeah. And there are residents who aren't going to who are going to say that, no, you're not doing what you said because and we know that's true. Um, yeah. And so I don't know. So I hear you. I hear you, Mandy. And then Jennifer. Um, could I ask Athena to page up just slightly so we can see this goal status discussion, but also the motion, if we can get them both on the page. Yeah. Okay. So the charge was referred. And so that's where we are. What might we might be able to add into the discussion part? We didn't really discuss it at GOL though. Um, is some of this something like this may require further discussion at the council? Mm. You know, something like that 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 might you know might imply that you know these are some questions being raised. We haven't discussed what we're doing with those questions yet, including is it handleable at GOL or not? Because really only the charge was referred and these were questions brought up when looking at the charge. Right. Um, and we haven't gone further than that first look at the charge once it was referred. So if people are okay, a sentence that said, these questions may require further council discussion, something like that. Jennifer, did you have your hand up? I took it down. Okay. Where would you put that? And and well, Michelle, go ahead. So so further council discussion pr uh, prior to acting on the charge. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Michelle. Yeah, I think that's a really like really proactive language. I mean, I think even you know, um, I don't even think we re and I, again, I, I'm okay if we want to keep it, but I don't even think we need. GOL raised a question about whether the charges drafted results in the, I mean, we did raise the question, so I guess it's fine for it to be there, but I just want to make sure that the message we're getting across is actually like the council has uh, yet to discuss with any real comprehend, you know, comprehend in any comprehensive way, the report. It was accepted by the council, but there was never really a full body discussion about what the recommendations were and how the council uh, feels about those recommendations. So I do like the addition of that, of this, of this sentence to clarify, yeah. um, the, to clarify that point. And I would say has yet to discuss the AHRA report and recommendations. And I don't even remember all of what they are right now, but I think that's important. Lynn and then Jennifer. I believe that the sentence needs to say the recommendations require further council discussion prior to acting on the charge. And then hmm. that takes care of oh, that. Yeah, that yes, yeah, that's good. So, yeah, so it's the recommendations. Yeah, thank you. Without the May. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because they definitely requires the recommendations. Re no, the rec recommendations require, require further counsel. Require, not require. Jennifer? Yeah, no, I agree. Because I think there's sometimes <clears throat> there's disappointment that all the recommendations aren't being followed through on when there was an ex. You, you make a recommendation, but there's no guarantee they're all going to be adopted. So do nice. we need the prior? sentence GOL just uh GOL raised a question if we're going to have that last one I would say we do because that's why the recommendations yeah. okay okay require yeah. further discussion yeah. before we can act because that question that. was raised yeah thanks Jim uh all right are we okay with that okay can we scroll up or down, or however they'll go on to the next. Um, yeah, can I look at it? I'm go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. No, um, Lynn, it's okay. This is a 
So I feel like when we say review process for developing town manager goals and timing, evaluation, goal setting, and budget, because the three of them, yes. all of this is so interlocked. So I would say goals, a colon, timing of evaluation and goal setting. Yeah. And budget. But the motion was only the evaluation process. I know. I know. Uh you mean the 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 you're That's talking about the evaluation process timing in terms of its relation to, to the budget process. The budget yeah. and the budget guidelines, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe that can be um clarified here somewhere. Review process of town, town manager evaluation, goal setting, and in relationship to the budget process. Um, and I understand, Mangia, what you're saying. Hang on, Michelle. I see your hand. Are we changing that? Or well, well, I was I was just going to include it here: timing of the evaluation in relation to thank um, you the budget. Yes. Uh, budget guidelines and manager goals. I think. Yeah. Yes. Into the evaluation. To which the evaluation is part. I, I, this, this is. I'm yeah, sorry. it's clunky. It is sorry. clunky. Uh, but Michelle's next. Are you going to comment on this section? Yes, I yeah, am. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, are we uh, only referring to timing when we're referring to the evaluation, or are we referring to timing in the context of the development of the town manager goals as well? It, the goals as well, because that was the whole, yeah. So then to me, I think like the headline here, review process for developing town manager goals, should it be review process and timing? Like, so should the timing also encompass? Review process for developing and timing of determining. It, of, it would right. be review process and timing for. Exactly. Yeah, right. that's good. That's good. Or um, yep. and, developing town manager goals and evaluation slash goal. Uh, and no, goals is now twice. Yeah, I don't think goals. And manager should... evaluation. And town manager goals and evaluation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it might, feels... might clarify to actually put town manager in front of evaluation too, just because if somebody's looking at this, they might say, what evaluate, like whose evaluation? I mean, we know. Former counselors, we're going to send a committee to your house. <laughs> right, to 360 <laughs> on that. Exactly. <laughs> Don't send me the results, okay? <laughs> Lynn? Love you, love you all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lynn? I would actually say review process and timing for town manager evaluation, colon, um, town manager goal setting, establishment of financial guidelines, and the budget, colon, and the budget. You wanted semicolons between? Yeah. She likes those little things. I like them for some reason. <laughs> and the budget cycle or something. Mandy Jo has, a, am sure, a wordsmithing, which is fine. For it, Mandy. It's not wordsmithing. I've got a problem with enlarging what we were actually referred to do to all of these things like that's not well, what thought... we we're asked to do especially as it relates to financial guidelines and the budget cycle which no we were harder. we were not we were we were not referred to um 
reviewing, we were not referred to review the process and timing of the establishment of financial guidelines and the budget cycle. That was yeah. not, I mean, look at the We're motion, connecting. The, motion the manager evaluation process. And so I, I feel like it's trying to be expanded beyond what was referred to us uh, completely. Okay, how I, about this? Wait, because I remember that we were trying to court that we were asked to see if we could coordinate it with the budget cycle. And that's why we have this timing in relation to develop yeah. timing of the evaluation in relation yeah. to those things, not the, the timing of those things, right? Yeah. Yes. This is the motion. So, I mean, essentially. But there's nothing. Suggesting that it all be tied together. Yeah. Or it be coordinated, you know, that there yeah. be. That if it was possible, we needed to look at that. So I thought I'd have some fun meetings with Andy. That was Mandy. I'm, I'm okay ask. putting it in the status and discussion. It was my my problem was with titling it that we were essentially referred to review the budget process timing completely and some oh, of that's oh. related and stuff. So okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. okay in discussion. You're okay with this? Yeah. Okay. Lynn, you have raised your hand. I'm fine. I think this is good. Okay. Everybody okay? Can we? I'm I'm, I'm typing along, so make sure I'm oh, I'm, so I'm sorry. capturing I'm what sorry. you're what you're all talking about and what you your intent is here. I I rephrased some of these things to make them like. I think you got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, can we keep going if there's more? Um, Attached committee charge, that's something that can happen. Uh, no, I think we're okay. Upcoming bylaws. Do we need to put the motions in there? Yes, that's why. I've... Okay, all right. I'll yeah, add the attachments and I'll find the yeah. motions. I think I meant Thank to do you. that before the meeting today. And <clears throat> Okay, keep going. It's all right that you didn't. I'm just trying. Um, may need to be moved. In. Can you scroll up a little bit? Uh, I. I moved. Okay, um, hold on. Well, I just wonder if and, I'm, I'm. There are recommendations. Yeah. I think the. Uh, Go ahead, Jennifer. Okay. No, just the. Um, Set parentheses, closing, waste hauler. I think it should go after waste hauler, not bylaw. Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, the close parentheses to go after hauler, not bylaw. I think it's right after bylaw because we've got general bylaw 3.3 .3, refuse collection and recyclable materials. That's its title. And in parentheses is what we've been calling it. Yeah. Right. But don't, isn't it the recyclable materials bylaw? It's general bylaw 3.3 .3, refuse okay. collection okay. and recyclable materials. Yeah, okay. bylaw goes sorry, in the beginning when we came at the end. Okay. Yeah. So it's... she's added referred to as. Is that? No, no, no. That was fine. I just thought the bylaw was part of the recyclable materials. Okay. okay. Never mind. What, 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 like when we official when we refer to the official name of bylaws, we go general bylaw general 3, bylaw 3 and then and then the title of the bylaw. It's just okay. our that's what the, our consistent practice has been around that. Okay. Uh, anything else here? Then let's keep uh, going. Yeah, I actually, I think we forgot to mention that we also have to do the uh, non-resident members of the um, finance committee. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Well, I think that's items that should be carried over because it's yeah, not a vacancy yet. Yes, right. right. Okay, Amended as long as it's down below. Yeah, and it's there under the uh, transportation thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, Athena on the transportation thing. Is Paul not doing that until this January now? We will have an opportunity to talk about that. Okay. Uh, later today, when we set the agenda, I think he had. Um, it's still on my list for the 18th. Okay. And Thank uh, you. last week he said he was meeting with Tracy. Yeah, I think there's, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, is there, I think that's it on this. Am I wrong? Where's the, oh, no, non voting. Got it. Yeah, it's right there. Can anybody think of anything else? And do we want to put like upon the resignation of Bob Hagner or something? Sure. Um, should it say non-voting resident member, Bob Hagner? We, we stopped saying resident because all the members are residents voting. And That's not... true. Yeah. Yeah. A non-voting member? Or we were no, it, I mean, oh, it's up there. It's up there. Now. Well, yeah, it's up I, there. I wonder, I'm sorry. In, instead of identifying who, I mean, we all know it's coming um, in anticipation of an upcoming resignation or something. It's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, that's better. And and we did discuss at finance yesterday that he has to resign effective the second. Right. But he hasn't submitted it yet. So right now we're just anticipating right. that he's getting done yeah. for this memo's purposes. I just wanted to confirm that he knows he has to resign. Oh, he knows. He knows that. Um, I think that's it. Am I wrong, Athena? Um, I think the review of the town council rules of procedure, we're going to try to do that on, uh, oh, no, I actually think under items that should be carried over, we might may say something like any remaining rules of procedure in case something doesn't finish yeah the, i don't even know if we can finish it so uh, the, the, the review council. of the rules of procedure are there we had mentioned last friday there were a couple we there were a couple of spots we recommended that the next council discuss so maybe we put those yeah. bullet points in too yes so can we you have it yeah uh, have the and, review of the town council rules council right rules above the yeah I think we add some bullet points under that one. Oh, no. They take out too much. It took yes. out finance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, we have it above. It says uh, after the transportation committee, it's the review of the town council rules of procedure. So can we say review of any of the remaining recommended changes of the town council rules of procedure? Changes, amendments, whatever. Not acted. Not acted on. And, and then what were like two or three things? It was what Jennifer Lynn and I were at this meeting. Weren't there like three things? Yeah, but I. We should yes. put them on so we don't lose track of them, what they were, that we said that needs discussed next council. And so review any recommended changes to the rules not acted on by the council prior to the end of the year, including, and then have three dots under that. Except yeah. we didn't recommend changes. No, I'm talking yeah, about just, when we reviewed oh. on Friday, there yeah, were the three of you that we would leave for the next council and we should list those items. Was okay. one of them how counselors want to be addressed or was? Yes. Yes. Yeah, because there's some interesting stuff that Stan Rosenberg and a group of people are doing around stuff like that. There was that. There was um, videos for right. counselors attending remotely. Videos on. <laughs> Yeah, 
And I feel like there was another one. Yeah, I can't remember what that one was. I'd have to find the document, but I'm, I, yeah, think, I'm I think there is right another one too. Can I just, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. Are these under the Transportation Commission? No, no, no. There's review of the town council. There should be a space between yeah. rules yes. of council rules transportation of commission. Yeah. Oh, 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 I see. Okay. And also, but that um, was a good question. How no, counselors? I'm going to mute. <laughs> I was like, wait, I'm confused. Um, How counselors wish to be addressed, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. thank you. I can't remember what the fourth, third one is. Um, just trying to find. Hello. Um. Sorry, I'm just looking through the notes on the, the version. Can't be super important. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that. Memory does get. <laughs> oh, it was. No, I know. I it know. was um, uh, under um, under other council meetings. There was a discussion about reorganizing the, the, the section on other council meetings. Special meetings, public forums, all of those. Okay public discussions or, or whatever they were called. Oh, yeah. right, right, right. Um, I do have another question to raise and I, I'm not sure where it goes, but at some point during this next calendar year, it is possible, not, not a given, that the um, charter review committee will be making recommendations. How those are handled will, will be based on the type of recommendations they are. Some of them may be recommendations that just the council can approve. Some might require special legislation. Some might require actually a vote of the public. How do we want to put well, any of them? I think it's premature to put that in this transition memo. Because okay. the report will come back to the council. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I, I just wanted to raise it because it's kind of looming out there. Anything else here? Um, I think to address this comment about may need to move this to automatic carryover, if the town manager brings that to the council on the 18th and the council decides to refer it to GOL, then um, right. I think my suggestion was that GOL authorize uh, Pat to amend the transition memo to clarify that that, that had already okay. been referred. So when you, when you vote on this today, um, uh, you could do that if you want. Maybe we could make a general thing that we authorize Pat to make any changes coming out of the meeting Monday night somehow. Yeah. Are we done with it? Because I can make a motion. Go for it. Um, does this document have a title, Athena? <laughs> um, GOL carryover memo. Okay. Um, I guess it's, I move to approve the GOL carryover memo as amended on December 13th, 2023, comma, with authorization for the GOL chair to amend as necessary. Um, following the council meeting. Following the December 18th. 2023 council meeting. Sounds Second. good. Second. I'm sorry for interrupting. No, Second. that was great. I appreciated it. Do we approve it or do we recommend approval of? No, you you approve it. The council doesn't approve. 
Okay. Yeah, because this is our report. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to the, the council. council. The, the council would only um, vote not to carry things over that are automatically carried over. Anything else? Uh, you got to vote on that. Oh, okay. And Jennifer? You're taking the vote. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Michelle. Hi. Mandy. Hi. And Lynn. Hi. And I'm an I, so it's I'm never I. first. I was totally caught off guard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the T last we name. Too many votes today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I should keep a list. I just kind of mush around with pictures. Um I think that's everything that we need to do today. Lynn? Yes, I believe it is. But before we end the meeting, I would like to thank Pat, actually Michelle, then Pat, yeah, first. and right. Jennifer for the no, various times do. during no, the last two Jennifer. years that you have ably, very ably chaired GOL. It's been a pleasure to be on this committee. Um, I've always thought it was one of the best committees <laughs> that the council has. So Thank I just you. want to express my appreciation to all of the people who have chaired and substituted as chairs in these last two years. And right. to Athena for her amazing support of this committee. Yeah, Thank amazing. Yeah, and, I, and I really uh, want to say to Michelle that you will be missed. So yeah. I'm hoping that you're really going to be the Survival Center board. I'm um, coming. I am joining the Survival Center board. I hope yes. to, but I am also going to come to every GOL meeting in the audience. Oh, oh I'm going to hold you to that. Hold you that. Ghost, I'm going to be the GOL ghost. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is a great committee, and I, I second what Lynn said. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Really, well. And thank both the chairs and Pat stepping in. And I, Jennifer, you did a great you've job. Been valuable, and many times uh, I do not like chairing. All of you know that. Um, but this is a, the best committee in many ways to chair. And I hope, uh, with the exception of Michelle, that we have only one new member come uh, <laughs> here. Because there's, no, there's just been a, a camaraderie that's developed over the five years in this committee, whatever the uh, configuration or constitution of the committee was. Um, and I think we're lucky because, you know, we're, we have a, such a specific job. Um, and only got testy when people thought they could change substantive things. And that really didn't happen very much with this group. Um, I am going to, unless there's another reason to, to adjourn the meeting at 1129. Okay, it's thank you all. Thank then. you. And thank you. Jen, I'll talk to you. Maybe we'll share reporting on the uh, rules okay. of procedure. For next, for, so, for yeah, next. maybe we can get together for coffee and figure out a plan. Great, okay. okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.